Hello everyone, a very good morning to all. So in this video, we're going to discuss everything about gravimetric analysis. This is an important experiment of your practical syllabus of BSc second year. So let's get started. So for introduction, so the gravimetric analysis is one of the most important branch of quantitative analysis. And uh, the term by term gravimetric, it means we are dealing with the weights. So what we do here is what we convert uh, an compound to be estimated. Uh, if we want to say we want to estimate copper, so we'll take one of the copper salts and we dissolve it in a, some solution and we'll convert it into some stable, uh, which is not soluble easily into a stable compound from where we want to estimate its weight. So it is a quantitative method. So it can also be defined as the quantitative method based upon the determination of mass of pure compound to which the analyte is chemically related. So the constituent to be estimated here is converted to some stable insoluble form of known formula by adding a precipitating agent to the solution containing that substance. So there are two main type of gravimetric analysis. One way is precipitation and other one is volatilization. So in precipitation, what we do is the analyte must first be converted to a solid precipitation with an appropriate precipitating agent. Here, we make the direct measurement of the um, uh, element to be estimated. We measure the amount, the weight of the precipitates formed and the volatilization is the indirect method. Here, what we do is we convert some uh, we are converting something to volatile compound and that volatile compound is just removed by heating and the mass loss is then calculated for that particular thing. So loss of mass is the thing which is required for volatilization method. So here, as far as your syllabus is concerned, we will be dealing with the precipitation method and what we will be doing is we'll be precipitating your elements which are to be estimated gravimetrically into uh, uh, some stable compound of those elements and we get their precipitate and we measure their mass. So uh, here we'll be discussing about the criteria for a successful determination. So for a successful determination in gravimetric analysis, the following criteria should be met. met. So the desired substance must be completely precipitated in most determination, the precipitate is of such low solubility that losses from dissolution are negligible. There should not be loss with dissolution. And an additional factor is that the common ion effect. So we can also use this factor, that is the common ion effect. We can use this in a way that uh, uh, we use some common ion and we'll put this common ion so that uh, we can shift the equilibrium to the right hand side where we are getting the precipitate. Say if we want to precipitate the silver ions, uh, we'll precipitate it by adding chloride ions and we'll get the precipitate of silver chloride and we'll keep this chloride ion in excess. This is the common ion effect so that it will keep the equilibrium of this reaction going towards the right hand side. So the low solubility of AgCl is further reduced by the excess of the presence of chloride ion, which is added further. So the weight form of the product should be of known composition. This is the condition that the product which we are converting with the element, which we are converting to some known composition. So that particular compound should be of known composition. Say here we are converting silver to silver chloride. So here we should must know the composition of this particular product, which we are converting to. It should be easy to handle, filter, washing should be easy, drying should be easy. It should be comfortably handled. And it is usually difficult to obtain a product which is pure or which is free from impurities, but we can always reduce our impurities with our handling. Now, uh, we are here discussing with the advantages and disadvantages of gravimetric analysis. So the advantages are this method is accurate, this is precise, uh, possible sources of errors are there, but these can be checked, these can be uh, hand to hand, these, these errors will vary hand to hand. And if we are doing the things precisely, we can always reduce the, these errors to the maximum extent. So it is an absolute method, it is relatively inexpensive also. 
now these are some of the disadvantages it should proper lab technique is critical uh, careful and time consuming technique is there it is uh, the we need clean glassware so these are the things which we uh, which can come under the precautions which we need to take to avoid the errors so the precipitates which we are obtaining or we can say the compound to which we are uh, converting our particular compound which is stable to some insoluble and stable form so those precipitates we should choose that particular compound based upon that its precipitates are insoluble there should be no significant loss uh, in filtration and filtration and washing should be easy so precipitate should be stable to atmospheric conditions the precipitates must be convertible to pure compound of definite composition and they have large crystals uh, should be free from contamination and purity of precipitates is the important thing but uh, there is always a chance that we get impure precipitates due to these uh, simultaneous processes which will take place that is co precipitation surface adsorption mixed crystal formation so some of these can be avoided and some of these are unavoidable but we can always these are the uh, things which we which will which will be uh, encountering while performing the experiments but these can be avoided to a large extent also there are some methods that is re precipitation and precipitation from homogeneous solution these are the methods with which we can further purify our precipitates which have been obtained so now coming to the steps experimental steps which we are going to perform so first one is the preparation of the solution then you are to carry out the precipitation then digestion uh, and now we'll be discussing all these points one by one so first one is the preparation of the analyte solution so first for the preparation the analyte solution must be dissolved in some suitable solvent we generally need take water as a solvent and sometimes we need adjustments of the solution conditions that is ph temperature concentration so these are some of the things which are to be kept in mind but as far as your syllabus is concerned we are just dissolving the analyte in the solution that is we are just making the aqueous solution of your analyte and we'll say we'll we are dissolving 15 to 20 g of the analyte in 1 liter of the solution and we'll make 1 liter of the test solution so next thing is the precipitation so while carrying out the precipitation uh, following things are to be kept in mind that the precipitating reagent which we are using is added at the concentration that favors the formation of a good precipitate so this may require low concentration extensive heating or careful control of the ph uh, in your uh, as far as your case is concerned uh, control of ph will not be measuring this and a large excess of precipitate should be avoided because that would increase the chances of dissolution of the precipitate and so after the precipitation we should always test the completeness of precipitation so for testing the completeness of the precipitation what we'll do is we'll uh, uh, firstly we'll add the precipitating agent drop wise slowly due by heating and also uh, uh, at the end of this if we are uh, if we after having a look at the precipitation if we see if it seems that precipitation is complete what we'll have to do is we'll have to add few drops of the precipitate precipitating agent and we have to carefully examine that no more precipitates are forming in there so if such is the case then that means there is a completeness of precipitation so if no new precipitates are being formed then that means uh, by, by the addition of drop of precipitating agent so that means that the complete of completeness of precipitation so till that stage we need to add the precipitating agent but that should always be precipitating agent should always be added in the slight excess excessive adding of addition of the precipitating agent will lead to the dissolution of the precipitates which have been formed next step is the digestion digestion means we are growing the precipitates which have been formed this will dissolve our impurities and this will give us large crystal so this is an important step digestion is generally done um, by heating this uh, more the more liquor to high temperature in which the crystals are present in which the precipitates are present so what we'll do is we'll heat it to some suitable temperature and we'll keep the solution aside for 2 hours 2 to 24 hours or we can say overnight we can keep them and we'll uh, filter the precipitates next day so for filtration uh, what we'll do is filtration is the step where we are separating the precipitates out of the molecule 
So this can be done using different methods. There are various media for filtration. We can use filter papers, we can use filter pulp, filter mats. So here, what we'll be using, we'll be using G4 crucible, that is sintered glass crucible. These are the options are available in different sizes based upon the size of the pores. This is the size of the, generally for uh, our purpose, for our experiment, we'll be using G4 crucible, which are having pore size of five to 10 microns. So these sintered glass crucibles are resistant to chemical and easy to clean. So this is how we use sintered glass crucible. So this is at the top here. It is sintered glass crucible at the top. This one is sintered glass crucible. So here we are attaching it to the Buckner funnel. So uh, this way we will add the precipitating uh, precipitates and the mother liquor from here. And here is the base at the base. There will be a filtration uh, base, fil filtration bed. So out of this, the, only the mother liquor will pass out here and here, from here we'll attach this thing with the vacuum. This is the real setup. So this is how it is done. So after the filtration, what we'll do is the next step is washing. So washing uh, is done to remove the mother liquor and to remove the impurities. So wet precipitates are to be washed with mother liquor and then Followed by that, we need to add electrolyte to the washed liquid because some precipitates cannot be washed with pure water and precipitization occurs. So uh, generally, these are this is done with uh, the electrolyte solutions and the same solution which we are using and very dilute of that solution which we are using as precipitating agent so that there is no dissolution of the precipitates in the test, uh, washing solution. So next is the drying. So to remove the solvent and wash electrolyte, what we do is we dry the precipitates which have been obtained in the sintered glass crucible at 100, and 100, at 100 to 120 degrees Celsius for one to two hours. So this what we'll have here, we'll remove the solvent here. And after the drying thing, what we'll have to do is we'll keep our G4 sintered glass crucible in the desiccator and we'll wait for cooling down and once it is cool, so what we'll have is we'll weigh it using the analytical balance. Also, one thing is important here, which I didn't mention earlier, that before starting to use a G4 crucible, it should be properly cleansed with the particular solvent. And also, it should be dried and weighed. So where we will be in calculation part, you will see we need that particular weight. So here comes our experiment, which we you are going to perform in lab. So for the calculation part, I'll be first discussing about the experiment, then we'll take up the calculation part. So uh, the your experiment is the estimation of copper as cuprous thiocyanate. So copper is the element which is to be estimated and cuprous thiocyanate is the compound for which we are up in the form of which we are obtaining the precipitates. We are obtaining the precipitates of copper as copper thiocyanate. So what we are doing is in this exercise, we'll analyze a compound containing copper to determine its percent content in it. Copper will be precipitated as copper thiocyanate. This means copper two ions will be reduced first to copper one before they are precipitated using this ammonium thiocyanate solution. So firstly, what we'll do is redox, we'll reduce copper two to copper one as we are using blue vitriol, that is copper sulfate. So here, this reduction step can be performed using this freshly prepared sulfurous acid, or it can be done using ammonium bisulfide. So in lab, we'll be using freshly prepared sulfurous acid for reducing copper two to copper one. So here, in the first step, copper two is getting converted to copper one. So First step can be performed using both these reactions, either this or that, the second one. So second step is the precipitation of copper thiocyanate. Here we'll add, here we'll use the solution of copper plus one as such. And what we'll do is we'll add ammonium thiocyanate as precipitating agent and we'll get the precipitate or precipitates of copper thiocyanate. So this is the procedure. You will be given the copper salt solution, which is and you'll also be given the precipitating agent. And the third one is that you'll be given sulfurous acid. So what you will, uh, this is the procedure. You can read it out. This is given in your lab manual. This is to be followed. And this is now coming to the calculation part. As uh, we have seen in the reactions that uh, 
two forty nine. This this copper sulfate is giving one part of con is containing one part of copper and is equivalent to one part of copper thiocyanate. So we can say here that two forty nine point five parts by weight of copper sulfate are equivalent to sixty three point five parts of copper, and which is further equivalent to one twenty one point five parts of copper thiocyanate. So this is your first experiment, which is to be done. So what you have to do is you have to determine gravimetrically the percentage of copper two in the given sample of blue vitriol. Blue vitriol is copper sulfate, which will be given twenty gram of which is dissolved in one liter of solution. So you are given the strength of the solution of blue vitriol. So strength is twenty gram per liter, and you will take twenty ml of this solution. What you will do is you will weigh your weigh your empty crucible, which you will take as W one. And you will weigh your crucible with precipitates. After uh, performing the whole procedure, you will get after drying, you will get your dried precipitate in the crucible. And what you will do is you will weigh that particular crucible which is having precipitates, and that will entitle you as you will entitle that as W two. And from that, by subtracting W. One from W two, you will get the weight of the precipitate. So this is a value what you need out of all the experiments. So next part which you are to do is the calculation part. So exactly what you want to calculate here is you need to calculate the strength of copper which you fix at X and further. Then after after that you will calculate the percentage of copper two which will come out as X divided by strength of copper two salt which is already given to you that is twenty grams per liter. Multiplied by hundred. So now, how to calculate X? That is the strength of copper. So this you already know. So now, uh, as you can see here, we ha we have got W grams of CuSCN, which is present in our G4 crucible. So uh, from here, you can see that one twenty one point five parts, or we can say one twenty one point five grams of copper thiocyanate contains sixty three point five grams of copper. So one gram of copper as CN would contain sixty three point five divided by one twenty one point five gram of copper. So uh, for W gram of copper as CN, you can easily calculate it. It comes out to be W multiplied by sixty three point five divided by one twenty one point five grams of copper. So from here, strength of copper two would be given by fifty multiplied by W multiplied by this thing. So from where this fifty factor came out? Because you have initially you have taken twenty ml. So for strength you need to take the thousand ml of the solution. So that is why the factor of fifty has been here. So this will give you the value of X which you needed here, and you will put the value of X here in the percentage of copper, and you will get the value which you were to calculate. And similarly, the next experiment is there from where you uh, you have been given this solution of blue vitriol. So this solution you are given. So here you have to calculate the value of x. So you will perform the experiment in the same way. And here you will use this relation that masses divide. Um, this is the division of the masses, and this is the division of the strength. So here you what you have to do is you already know the molecular mass, and here in the molecular mass you will write it as x h two. So molecular mass of copper S C N you already know, and strength of hydrated copper sulfate is given to you, and strength of copper S C N you can easily calculate by multiplying fifty with W because you initially you took twenty ml. So what you will do is you will multiply it by the uh, factor that is thousand multiplied by W divided by twenty. So you will get. Fifty W. So this is how this is the relation which we which is going to come here. So from here you can easily calculate the value of X which is required, which is actually the strength of CuSCN. So from here the value of X can be calculated. So sorry, which is the the say here X is the value of number of waters of crystallization. So from here X can be easily calculated using this equation because uh, this W you will get from the weight of the precipitates. So this is all about your experiment for the gravimetric analysis of copper. So these two experiments are to be performed. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of the day.